G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, here's an interesting story I found today and it makes me think about if this bull run could be a super cycle. It's been said before and it'll most likely get said again, but I think there's definitely the possibility that this one could be it. This one could be the super cycle, you know, with all the adoption coming on board and obviously, you know, with adoption comes the really, really big money. This might be the one uh, that is, you know, the one that kind of blows everyone out of the water, although the first one uh, would be pretty hard to beat. But let's have a look. Every major bank will have exposure to Bitcoin, says renowned fund manager Bill Miller. Veteran investor Bill Miller says that all major banks, investment banks and high net worth firms will eventually have some exposure to Bitcoin or something like it. I think the something like it part uh, is very, very interesting. I think they're all going to try and get into Bitcoin. Uh, there's going to be a massive supply shock. It's going to get really, really expensive and it's going to go to prices uh, that we possibly can't even wrap our heads around. Not financial advice, just personal opinion. Uh, and they'll likely start to get into other things. And I did speak about Litecoin the other day. Litecoin is a Bitcoin-like coin. Uh, that's a bit of a tongue twister there. So it's you know basically a copy of Bitcoin, but there's a lot more of them, and it hasn't all been mined over um, you know many many years. I think that's a possibility that they will start to go into things like Bitcoin uh, and Litecoin and Ethereum and other coins. So very interesting that he said that. He said that Bitcoin staying power is getting better every day. Uh, Bill Miller's bullish statement about Bitcoin. A growing number of major corporations have been gaining exposure to Bitcoin, prompting speculation of when the rest of them will follow. And I think they will start to follow very, very shortly if they aren't already. Following MicroStrategy's $425 million investment, Square invested in, invested in Bitcoin and PayPal launched a cryptocurrency service. Now famous investor Bill Miller reportedly told CB, uh, CNBC on Friday, I think every major bank, every major... Uh, I think every major bank, every major investment bank, every major high net worth firm is going to eventually have some exposure. Oh, that's the same quote from before. My apologies, I'm reading the same thing twice. He named gold or some kind of commodities as alternative investments like Bitcoin. Bill Miller founded uh, Miller Value Partners and currently serves as its chairman and chief investment officer. He manages the opportunity, equity and income strategy portfolios. Miller previously co-founded Leg Mason Capital Management and co-managed the Leg Mason Capital Management Value Trust from its inception in 1982. He took over as sole manager in December 1990 and served in this role for the next 20 years. Prior to joining Leg Mason, he served as a treasurer on the J.E. Baker Company, a major manufacturer of products from the steel and cement industries. He famously beat the S&P 500 every year from 1991 to 2005. This guy is an investing, you know, genius, absolute genius to outdo the S&P 500 for every year for, oh God, what's that? You know, 24 years, that's quite impressive. Most people just, you know, follow the S&P 500, invest in it and, uh, you know, yeah, follow the gains that it makes. He's outperformed it. So for him to say that he thinks all the big banks, you know, and big firms and that are going to get into Bitcoin makes me super bullish about Bitcoin. You know, he would know. He's the kind of guy that you want to pay attention to. And him saying that makes me think that he's probably already built a position in Bitcoin. Uh, and also, as he said, uh, something like it. Uh, again, I think lots of people and companies and all of the rest of it, high net worth individuals, are going to start to pour into Bitcoin. There's no doubt about that. But there's going to be a massive supply shock and it makes me think Bitcoin's price could go absolutely astronomical. Uh, and, you know, as it starts to get more and more expensive, particularly once it's, you know, hitting 100,000, let's say 150,000, maybe even $250,000, most people are just going to look at it, other than, again, really high net worth individuals, 250,000 to them won't be anything. They'll probably buy it anyway, although they'll probably have got in earlier. 
but companies with a lot of money, you know, they could afford that. Individuals, they're just going to be like $250,000 a coin. It's too much. And they'll start looking for the alternatives. So something like Litecoin, and I'm not saying it's going to be Litecoin, but I just suspect that Litecoin might be the next thing as they'll go, what's similar to Litecoin? Uh, and then they'll jump onto Litecoin. There's 65 million of them. Uh, I think there's still plenty more to be mined uh, and, you know, big institutional buyers and uh, high net worth individuals, they'll be able to get in sort of early, you know, uh, and build a real foothold uh, in things like Litecoin. And again, I'm not saying it's going to be Litecoin. I'm just saying that Bitcoin will be so expensive and there's so few of them left. There's only another, I think, two million or something uh, to be mined, something like that. Most of them have been mined. So it's going to be hard to get into Bitcoin. That opportunity uh, is, you know, going to be gone for most people other than you know just buying little bits of it but i'm talking about whole bitcoins that'll disappear i think by uh the time we get to december next year i don't think uh very many people will ever be able to own a whole bitcoin after that you know we'll have to wait and see what the uh the bear market is next time although i don't think the bear market's going to be anything like uh the bear markets that have come and gone i think most people are just simply going to buy and hold for the long term so let's say and this is putting it out there, uh, you know, going out on a limb, I'll say, not putting it out there. Let's say Bitcoin gets to 288,000, like Plan B's uh, S2F model says. I would be surprised if it comes back under 50 to maybe 100,000 after that. I think 100,000 would probably be a little bit on the high end, but I would be surprised if it comes down under 50,000. I think, again, there will just be too many people that will have bought in uh, too many people will be understanding of how Bitcoin works and the cycles, and they're just not going to sell it for really under a hundred thousand. Even if they buy it for over a hundred thousand, uh, and it falls down, you know, sort of below a hundred thousand, they're, they're not going to sell. They're just simply going to hold for another four years if they've done their research. So. Again, I don't know what the price could be, uh, and based on this, it could be even higher. Like it, it's hard to say if we go into a super cycle. It's very hard to say what Bitcoin's price could be. But here we've got one of the best investors, you know, of the, the modern era saying that he thinks everyone's going to get into Bitcoin. Not everyone, but, you know, all the major banks and major firms and, you know, high net worth individuals. And they will pay a premium for it and already are through gay, uh, gay sorry, Grayscale and things like that. And they're going to continue to buy. Grayscale won't stop buying Bitcoin or Ethereum or Litecoin or anything as long as new money continues to come in they'll just keep buying it once the new money starts to slow down because they're paying you know almost twice the price for it then they'll stop uh, buying that's when they will uh, no longer buy anymore but as long as new money comes in and again the high net worth individuals and firms and that if they don't understand the whole cryptocurrency thing they'll be like oh how do you store it and how do you not get hacked and all the rest of it They'll just go to firms like, you know, Pantera, Digital Capital and Grayscale and all the other ones that are out there and they will custody it for them and they will make them pay a premium for it. So that's what makes me think this could be a super cycle. Now, this is a chart of all the money in the world. It's quite popular. It's been on the net for a while and this one's the updated one for 2020. This is what Bitcoin's worth. Now, it's probably gone up a little bit since then. But this is the total market cap. This is military spending. So it's Bitcoin times uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, let's say almost 18. Military spending alone uh, is 18. And I'm sure this is uh, an American thing. So it's 18 times the total uh, Bitcoin market cap. The budget deficit, uh, coins and notes from all over the world. Maybe, the, I don't know, maybe that is uh, all around the world. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. Fed's balance sheet. Again, how many more times is there Bitcoin? So the Fed are even likely to get into Bitcoin and things like that is what people are talking about. All the money owned by billionaires, you know, these massive, uh, you know, juggernaut uh, investors and financial uh, behemoths. Uh, that come from, uh, that are part of this billionaire stock. Imagine if all of them just put in, you know, a couple of percent. And I'm, I guarantee you, if Bitcoin really takes off, they're just going to. They will. They won't be able to not to. So imagine all of that then going into Bitcoin. 
Gold, gold's already starting to lose uh, some value against Bitcoin. Millennials and the new age, they're going to pile into it. So definitely some of this gold can probably be put into Bitcoin. Fortune 500 companies, the biggest companies in the world. Imagine again, MicroStrategy, uh, Michael Saylor. I think they're going to go down as one of the most you know savvy uh, investors of all time. That company will do unbelievably well with its Bitcoin stocks in the future. Now, again, I could be wrong, but I just I think they will go down in history as being you know very very smart. Uh, their stocks in Bitcoin alone will keep them afloat. <laughs> Even if the business itself wasn't doing very well, they would make so much money. And Bitcoin will just continue to go up because it is finite. Someone's not going to suddenly come across more Bitcoin. Look, could the Bitcoin that have sort of been lost somehow be found again? Yes, and that would bring the price down a little bit. But it still doesn't change the fact that there's only ever going to be 21 million of them. Whether we've got 18 million of them or only 16 million doesn't matter. We're basing it off the 21 million. So yeah, I think the opportunity for Bitcoin is massive. You know, stock markets, imagine they start to pop, you know, pile into Bitcoin. That's the New York Stock Exchange that's there. Then you throw on the Nasdaqs and all the other ones and they are going to get into Bitcoin. It is a matter of time. It's, you know, that self uh, fulfilling pr prophecy it's already starting it is happening and again i'm going to go back that's bitcoin at the moment and let alone all the other cryptocurrencies they're going to boom as well now all of them will kind of you know catch that fire but not all of them will last long term that'll be the thing bitcoin's probably going to be here uh long term it doesn't have to be anything more than a good store of value it doesn't have to scale a whole lot more um, don't get me wrong if it could it'd be a whole lot better but i think this is going to make up you know part of everyone's sort of investment basket in the future and that is going to push the price super high now again we go down to global debt and even more scary, there's real estate. So, you know, that can pour into there. Uh, it's the derivatives market here. Imagine the derivatives market, you know, gets a piece of Bitcoin. That will push the price unbelievably high. And this time round, we're getting all of that. We're getting the major adoption. We're getting the businesses and everything on board. So when we come over here and we look at Bitcoin's price right now, we're not even at all old time highs. I shudder to think what the price of Bitcoin could get to in the next five to 10 years. You know, there's people talking people talking about a million dollars. It's hard to say, excuse me, but if all that money truly does pour into Bitcoin, I think, you know, 250,000, 300,000, maybe even half a million this cycle is feasible is it likely that's a different story very hard to say but uh it's definitely feasible particularly you know the big businesses there's not that much bitcoin on the exchanges i think i heard something the other day there's only about you know like two million bitcoin available on the exchanges at the moment one entity one big entity like facebook or a government or something could you know come in and buy most of those up if they wanted to now they're not going to, but they are probably going to come in and invest, you know, some serious capital into it. You know, micro strategy again. Michael Saylor, he may well go down as one of, you know, the best, you know, investors of all time, and his business could be an absolute behemoth because of it. We'll have to wait and see. But again, grayscale and all the rest of it are involved. So, yeah, we. I mean, you can have a look here. From the old all-time highs. This is, I think this is about a 6,000% move. So 7,000% move, six or 7,000% move from, from the old all time high to the new one was 7,000%, thereabouts, you know, give or take. All right, what about this one over here? We go to this all time high. 1,600%. Now again, it was easy to make these moves because there wasn't that much Bitcoin available back then. You know, it hadn't all been mined and, you know, there was still plenty to sort of go around. So it didn't take a lot for this big massive move to happen. This move 
was really just what would is going to be considered a lot of the sort of OGs. Anyone who was in from sort of you know 2015 uh, onwards, they're still going to be considered early adopters, OGs. Now, not the kind of OGs back here in 2012 and that, but in you know years to come, people are going to say anyone that got in back here, you know, they were some of the early adopters. There was very little institutional money coming in here. I'm not saying there wasn't any, there definitely was. Grayscale had been around and things like that. But the big institutional money sort of started around here. There was a little bit back here, not a whole lot, but it's definitely starting sort of around here. Again, micro strategy, getting in at around that kind of nine to $10,000 level and everyone else is starting to follow suit. So the price that Bitcoin could go to, you know, again, this was a thousand, this here was 16, 1,600% uh, and was really, again, just a bit of FOMO from, you know, crypto nerds, really. That, that's what most of that was. Uh, and look, I'm a crypto nerd, so I'm not, you know, trying to hang shade on anyone there. There was very little institutional money getting in. Institutional money is now getting in. So I, you know, it, it's possible, I, I just don't know, but I do have an inkling that this bull run might be something that really mirrors something a little bit more like this. Now, I'm not saying it's going to do 7,000%. Look, it could. Uh, it, it could do more. It's just hard to know if suddenly everyone and all the big companies, you know, and high net worth individuals really do pour into Bitcoin. Something like this absolutely could be possible, although I think it's unlikely. But I think this 1,600% uh, one that we got here, oh, yeah, I'm starting to think maybe this might be eclipsed. Maybe this bull run will be the bull run that, you know, will kind of top all bull runs, you know, short of this. But again, this was just the very, very early adopters before anyone really knew what it was. Uh, and the price was easy to move, you know. A couple of hundred thousand, a couple of million dollars could have moved that price oh so easy. Now we start to talk about, you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, even billions of dollars. If billions of dollars gets into crypto, sorry, trillions... Uh, if, you know, we've already got billions and hundreds of billions, but if trillions of dollars flow into Bitcoin from here, you know, this old all-time high, I think to say that it might, you know, 5x from there, and that gets us to 100,000, is seriously low. Seriously, seriously low, if that happens. And that's the thing, if it happens. I don't know that it will happen, but I just, there's an inkling in me that thinks that this bull run could be something that is just going to blow people's minds completely out of the water. And they're going to say, because again, people have said, well, the, the other one was 7,000%. You know, this one is 16, 1,600%. Uh, so the next one's probably going to be like 900%. All right, let's say we go up, uh, which is, you know, roughly, well, let's say 800%, roughly half of it. Let's say uh, 20,000 times, nine, you know, 800%. That's getting up there, 20 times eight. That's a lot, that's pushing it up there. Now again, whether it will do it or not, and whether it will seriously eclipse that and go past the 1600% gains, very hard to tell. But let's have a look at where the price is currently at. So it is still sitting within this range. So again, it didn't even come down and touch. It's still sitting in here and you know we've only got really a couple of days. This would be the max. So we're gonna know by the 16th of November whether we're gonna break downwards or break upwards. I think we're gonna break upwards. I don't think we're gonna go down. I think, again, the, the FOMO is just starting to build. It will continue to build. The supply shock uh, is going to uh, start to kick in very very soon there's only two million available on exchanges the you know the otc desks you know they're running out of bitcoin they're not even able to put it on the exchanges at the moment you know grayscale's buying it up uh what was it uh square app they sold three times more bitcoin than were than what was made last month alone. And that's only going to continue to grow. I really do think a supply shock uh, is coming and Bitcoin is gonna make some absolutely massive moves. Uh, and again, I think it may out eclipse the last uh, bull run. Just, you know, it, it'll depend how much money gets pushed into it. If it really is, 
you know trillions of dollars that get pushed into uh, Bitcoin and just the whole altcoin market I think it could really pump and you know maybe we see you know a, a three four five hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin in this bull run and look you know really putting it out there imagine if we saw a million dollar Bitcoin in this bull run now that we'd have to be up around a nine trillion dollar mark for that to happen we need to get up to around the uh, to where gold was and I'd I'm not sure, you know, I'm, I'm more leaning against that happening in this bull run, but into the future, I think a million dollar Bitcoin uh, is quite easy and I think it could go a lot higher in the sort of next more 10 to 15 to 20 year, uh, you know, trajectory. Who knows what it might go to. Anyway, uh, moving on, lucky last. Let's just have a look. Refresh this. So the market cap was 450 uh, billion there. So moving up a little bit was 52. There's 53. We can see Bitcoin again. Its price is coming down, but it's still ranging in and around there. Uh, the BTC dominance is dropping. There you go. We're getting a little bit of a alt season again. So we didn't quite hit the 65 percent that I thought we would. Uh, and look, maybe we don't. Maybe we see another altcoin cycle uh, and Bitcoin just ranges around this kind of $15,000, $16,000 uh, range for a while. But uh, again, I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to make another move and we're going to get up to all-time uh, highs fairly quickly. I don't think we stay in this range for too long. Gas prices come down a little bit. Uh, but again, I think a lot of people are getting into uh, ETH 2.0 at the moment and that's why gas prices are up. What are the big movers? Loopring. Whew. Nice. And I've got some Loopring, so I'm happy with that. Kyber Network. So glad they, yeah, they took a really brutal hit, uh, Kyber Network. But again, look, most things did. Blockstack, nice. Uh, moving back up as well. Happy with that. Uniswap, thank God. Uh, that was one of my worst trades uh, for quite some time there. So I am glad that it's finally moving back up and I'm not too far off uh, not being in a loss at the moment, Yearn Finance, I mean, that really has bounded back not even a week ago. Well, yeah, I think it might have been a week ago. Yeah, it would have been there. It's nearly 100%. This was at $9,800. So it's nearly doubled in seven days. So uh, congratulations to them. Kasama, Synthetics Network, again, same thing. You know, I'm so happy that... Uh, you know, I bought some, uh, and again, I bought it $3. I wasn't sure if it would go down on my target of $2.61. It actually went down a little bit lower, $2.49, but it didn't stay there for very long at all, and so I'm already in profit from those buys. And again, you know, the bulk of what I bought was back at $0.84. Cents. So every time it goes up by $0.84, cents, you know, I've doubled my money again. So loving it. Well done. What about losers? Do we have any big losers? Unfortunately, yes, to Centraland. So that's no good. I bought some and that has uh, hurt me a little bit. But again, that's the way it goes. Digibytes really hurt me. Unfortunately, I must have bought at almost the, the peak height. I think it's down 30 something percent for me. Ran down a little bit, but that's all right. It's, you know, it went up 20 percent. Uh, so mainly single digit losses, which is not too bad. Other really, other than really those top four again, you know, five percent's not too bad, and even nine percent's not too bad. But you know, those 12 percent losses, uh, they'll hurt a little bit. But again, you got to look at the gains they made over the seven days. So overall, not too bad. All right. Hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button. I bring out material every day. I'll be back again tomorrow <laughs> unless something really drastic happens. All right. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train. And I'll see you next time.